Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on the remedies for the problems facing the agricultural sector. Students, in our previous lesson we discussed the natural and human-made problems of the agricultural sector. We have seen that the natural problems that affect the agricultural sector include insufficient and uneven distribution of rainfall and climate change causing drought and food shortage in some areas. We also discussed the human-made problems such as land degradation including erosion caused by poor land management and deforestation, inadequate infrastructure and marketing facilities, backward agricultural practices including unimproved animal breeds, poor and wasteful harvesting. In today's lesson we will discuss the remedies for the problems facing the agricultural sector. To begin with, I want you to think of possible solutions to the natural problems the agricultural sector is facing. Remember, this is a brainstorming session and you can list any possible solutions that comes to your mind. You brainstorm the solutions with the students sitting next to you. A list of problems the sector has faced will be displayed on the television screen for you. I hope you've enjoyed the brainstorming session. Well, we will be explaining the answers throughout our discussion today. Most of these remedies are clearly stated in the agricultural 
and Rural Development Policy of Ethiopia. Let's start with the remedies for the natural problems. To mitigate the problems caused by high dependence on rain-fed agriculture, the following remedies could be taken. One of the possible solutions is to promote the use of local streams and lakes for irrigation purposes of various scales. The second solution is to promote and expand the storage of rainwater under shades to reduce the rate of evaporation and enable people to store water for longer periods of time. The third possible solution is to expand the number of forestation and reforestation schemes through structured and financed agency. Fourth, it is possible to develop different approaches and packages that suit different agroecologies including drought-prone and pastoral areas. This includes the production of drought-resistant crops in drought-prone areas so that the recurrence of acute shortages of food would be minimized. Students, these are solutions to the problems mainly caused by nature. I hope you've mentioned some of these during your brainstorming session. And now, we will discuss the solutions to the human-made problems. Before we do that, I want you to brainstorm in groups the possible solutions to the human-made problems. The problems will be displayed on the television screen for you.
I hope you enjoyed the brainstorming session. Let's now discuss the major remedies for the human-made problems. To overcome the problems associated with land degradation, measures such as water and soil conservation, forestation activities have proven to be effective, particularly in the highland areas of Ethiopia. Well, students, we still have more possible solutions. Let's consider the infrastructural and long-term behavioral problems. As one of the problems is lack of infrastructure for the farmers, also one of the solutions is to build infrastructure such as rural roads, transportation, and communication. It is also very important to improve the provision of potable water, improve agricultural marketing systems, develop rural finance institutions and cooperatives, and expand other infrastructural facilities. Backward agricultural practices constitute the third group of agricultural problems. A number of solutions are clearly set in the agricultural policy of Ethiopia. Before we discuss the solutions, I want you to do a third activity. You will answer some questions based on a video that you are going to watch in a moment. The video compares two farms. Suppose the two farms in the video we are going to show you are located in the same area or agroecological zone and have same soil type, have no difference in terms of access to infrastructural services, are cultivated based on rainfall and are equally subjected to natural problems. Given the assumptions I just mentioned, watch the following video and identify the reasons that caused the difference in yield between the two farms. As you can see, this farm has yielded a good harvest. In contrast, this farm has yielded bad harvest. Now, the question again is what caused this difference in yield in the two farms? Discuss this question individually. Students, have you identified the reasons for the difference in the yield? I hope so. As all factors that cause difference in yield are held constant, the only reason left is difference in agricultural practices by farmers. This takes us to our next discussion on the remedies to overcome the adverse effects of such traditional practices. One of the solutions is combining the approaches of diversification and specialization, complemented with extension services that incorporate consistent capacity building of agricultural professionals. Students, another possible solution to overcome the adverse effects of such traditional practices is to promote literacy campaigns 
and keeping the health of farmers and pastoralists. The solutions I just mentioned involves implementing adult literacy programs, constructing more farmers training centers, offering trainings to farmers and pastoralists in farmers training centers so that they easily understand price and farm technique related information. Providing basic preventive and curative health services including of the issue of agriculture in school curricula and so on. Yet another solution is improving the generation, multiplication and dissemination of technologies including improved seeds, improved tools, production, storage and distribution methods and use of fertilizers and chemicals. The third solution is the combined use of diversification and specialization and provision of agricultural extension services. Students, I am sure you're familiar with the meaning of extension services. But do you know the difference between the two approaches, that is diversification and specialization? write down their meaning individually. Have you defined the two approaches? Very good. Diversification is an agricultural strategy in which different agricultural activities are carried out in the country, a particular area, or a farm household. Whereas, specialization is an agricultural strategy in which a country, or a particular area, or a farm household focuses only on one agricultural activity or type of crop. Well, students, we have explained the possible solutions to the problems the agricultural sector has been facing. In today's lesson, we have discussed a number of solutions that can be applied to overcome the adverse effects of the natural and human-made problems facing the agricultural sector. In the next non-plasma lesson, you will learn about the historical development of the industrial sector in Ethiopia. See you next time in another program. Until then, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.